Hello, everyone, welcome back, this is Easy Learn AI. In the previous video, we explored the structure and working mechanism of the perceptron. It turned out to be a great artificial neural network for weather prediction. However, there were clear limitations to this perceptron. But it evolved impressively to overcome these limitations. In this video, we'll look into the limitations of the perceptron and how to overcome them. Chapter 1, Perceptron and Linear Classifier As shown in this diagram, when we represent cloud amount in one dimension, and wind strength in another, we can form a 2D plane with clouds and wind. On this 2D plane, we can clearly classify clear and rainy weather with just a single line. This is known in mathematical terms as a linear classifier. Perceptron, being able to linearly separate data on a 2D plane, acts as a linear classifier. So, regardless of how data is distributed on a 2D plane, if given a data set that can be classified with a single line, Perceptron, through training, adjusts connection strength, weights, to categorize each data set. Chapter 2 the relationship between perceptron and linear functions. Now let's delve deeper into how the perceptron model handles the role of a linear classifier. Here, one input value in a perceptron implies processing data in one dimension. Meaning, if there are two input values, it is a linear separator handling 2D data. If there are three input values, it processes 3D data, and for n input values, it handles n-dimensional data. You can consider it as dividing an n-dimensional hyperspace into an n-1 dimensional hyperplane. As we saw in the previous video, the perceptron can be represented by a certain equation. If the left-hand side value is greater than 0.5, it predicts rainy weather, and if the left-hand side value is less than 0.5, it predicts clear weather. As we saw in the previous video, initially, the connection strength values are set randomly. As we iterate through the points on the plane, inputting them into x1 and x2, adjusting the connection strengths incrementally based on the error, the values of w1 and w2 gradually approach 0.5. Eventually, this linear function matches the line precisely showing that perceptron is a kind of artificial neural network model that incrementally finds the slope and intercept of a one-dimensional function dividing a two-dimensional plane. Chapter 3, Limitations of Perceptron So, the perceptron can classify data as a linear separator, but what about this type of dataset? Can a perceptron learn a dataset that is not linearly separable? The answer is no. In 1969, psychologists Marvin Minsky and mathematician Seymour Papert demonstrated these limitations in their book, Perceptron. They showed that perceptrons can't even solve simple problems, because it's a non-linearly separable problem. The XOR gate is a basic element in electronic circuits. When it was revealed that the perceptron artificial neural network could not even solve the most basic gates that form the foundation of electronic circuits, interest in the perceptron significantly waned among the public, marking the first AI winter in the 1970s. Chapter 4, Emergence of Multilayer in Neural Networks Even during declining interest, some scholars, including psychologist James McClelland, mathematical psychologist David Rimmelhart, and experimental psychologist and computer scientist Jeffrey Hinton, continued researching artificial neural networks resiliently. Along with many others from various fields, they led to the emergence of more powerful multilayer neural networks, rekindling the era of artificial neural networks. Before delving into multilayer neural networks, it's essential to grasp them intuitively. When faced with complex datasets like this, the traditional perceptron is unable to achieve linear separation. However, by drawing four lines in this manner, we can successfully separate this dataset. Essentially, these four lines can be viewed as four perceptrons, and by connecting another perceptron that takes these four outputs as inputs, 
we establish a multilayer neural network capable of separating such datasets. Thus, a multilayer neural network comprises an input layer, one or more hidden layers, and an output layer. The more layers we have, the more complex forms of data can be handled, right? This layer richness is described as deep, which has led to the term deep learning we use today. Therefore, delving into multilayer neural networks is the genuine first step towards deep learning. Compared to a single layer perceptron, multilayer neural networks have seen various advancements. Firstly, the activation function transition from a step function to more sophisticated functions like sigmoid or tan. For reducing the error in multilayer neural networks, gradient descent methods have been introduced, and perhaps one of the most crucial concepts in the history of neural networks, the backpropagation algorithm, has emerged. In the next video, we will unravel these important concepts one by one, and explore multilayer neural networks together. We appreciate your engagement and look forward to exploring further with you in the next session. Until then, farewell. Your interest and love for this channel help a lot in preparing these lectures, so please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button.